hello guys uh, how are you all doing hope you are all okay and you are enjoying your life and you're also watching my videos uh, i'm sure you would have been watched all of my previous video and you would be waiting for the new one here i am with a very important and new topic that is endometriosis endometriosis actually a big concern for the ultrasounds uh, clinicians those who are practicing ultrasounds and many a time they come across with different cystic lesions and uh, they are always confused whether to put the word of hemorrhagic cyst or chocolate cyst or endometriosis so here i am hopefully uh, this uh, video will help you to understand what exactly the endometriosis is and how we will be able to appreciate on the ultrasound imaging first of all this is very important gynecologically concerned and nearly 5 to 45 percent of the women effect from the endometriosis in their reproductive life it is a major uh, public health concern and it causes significant morbidity as far as the clinical symptoms are concerned it causes abdominal pain uh, urinary abnormality dysmenorrhea metrorrhagia dyspareunia and all these discomfort related to the pelvic organ is caused by the endometriosis so far uh, its other clinical significance are concerned that is uh, like we have to correlate with other clinical information, the patient history and the ultrasonic finding because uh, its ultrasonic findings are quite confusing. Like uh, it will mimic as a hemorrhagic cyst. It will mimic sometime as a dermoid cyst and uh, where we have to label the endometriosis because uh, management changes. If it regress so it would no longer be endometriosis but endometriosis does not regress it will remain persist and there is need to be a particular and proper management as far as the endometriosis uh, ultrasonic presentations are concerned as i uh, explained for um, earlier that it is quite confusing but it uh, present in three forms it will appear as an adnexal cyst which uh, we are usually calling it as a endometrioma so this would be an endometrioma this is one of the presentation of the endometriosis the second endometriosis is that is peritoneal plaques or adhesion so in the form of peritoneal adhesion and peritoneal plaque this could be an endometriosis and the third presentation is deep infiltrating form in deep infiltrating form there is likely uh, the presence of some implant somewhere or nodule somewhere having its stroma and gran. So these are the three clinical presentations of the endometriosis. So far, the site of the endometriosis uh, are concerned. Uh, it not only involving the ovary, but it also involves the fallopian tube, the broad ligament, uh, posterior caldi sac. Uh, so endometriosis is not limited to all these three organ. It uh, likely to involve the urinary bladder and the bowel as well so mind you this is really very important that you have to be very careful uh, to diagnose the endometriosis for the diagnosis purpose, uh, purpose ultrasound is a well accepted uh, modality but beside this mri is the modality of choice so let's start watching these images and uh, figure out how you will be able to label the endometriosis at what point so start watching these imaging this is a transvaginal scan and on this transvaginal scan you can appreciate a well-defined uh, cystic lesion showing a low level internal egos but one thing uh, worth noting here is you can appreciate a small typical peripheral ecogenic foci that is the characteristic of endometriosis so here you will see multiple spectrum of uh, the appearances of the endometriosis this is the one commonest one most of the time clinician confuse uh, with this appearance and uh, they label this case as a solid mass in actual this is not the solid lesion this is actually low level internal echoes these are hemorrhagic contents some of them uh, mean aggregated together and it uh, looks like a clumps but one typical tiny calcific foci in the peripheral area which uh, represent as a calcific foci and it might confuse you with the dermoid cyst this is not the dermoid cyst this is a typical appearance of the endometriosis as i mentioned that uh, uh, endometriosis and the dermoid cyst 
appearances are quite similar again you have to take the history and pay focus and pay attention uh, for the ultrasonic appearances so this is the classical example of endometriosis this is the another slide of the endometriosis showing another spectrum of the endometriosis a well-defined complex cystic lesion can be appreciated on the transvaginal scan you can appreciate towards the right slightly hypoequic area and uh, uh, towards the left this is hyperequic area what happens here this is this particular appearance is called as fluid fluid level what actually happens in this case the thick and uh, aggregated clumps of the hemorrhagic content and hemorrhagic uh, hematocrit uh, contents uh, has been deposited in the basal area sedimented in the basal area and the superficial there is a low level internal echo that's why you can appreciate a density difference between these two and because of this density difference it uh, uh, creating a radiological pattern which is called as fluid fluid level so this fluid fluid level is a characteristic of endometriosis again i would uh, explain here that this uh, uh, particular pattern can be confused with the dermoid because in dermoid cyst you can also appreciate some of the portion of the fatty contents which appears supernatantly or on the surface of the cyst so it will give rise to the same appearance but in that case uh, this is not the dermoid cyst this is hem endometriosis so in the last slide i have shown you an ecogenic foci uh, which was a particular presentation of endometriosis here in the second slide you can appreciate fluid fluid level which is again an endometriosis pattern this is again another example and again another appearance of the endometriitis endometriosis uh, a well-defined complex cystic lesion can be appreciated on the transvaginal scan on this image you can appreciate low level internal echoes within the cystic lesion but what one another important feature is uh, in the peripheral region of the cyst you can appreciate small nodularity these are avascular nodules arranged in the periphery of the cystic lesion so this is again an endometriosis it's a very particular pattern but it need quite attention like on a trans abdominal scan you cannot appreciate this pattern this you can appreciate only on transvaginal scan because on transvaginal scan the low level internal echoes will be quite uh, visible and beside this the small peripherally placed avascular e nodule can be easily picked on the uh, transvaginal scan clinician might confuse uh, uh, with the thickened wall but if you see that the wall will be uh, this wall will not be regular this is not the smooth and beside this you can appreciate that this is a nodular pattern this is not a homogeneous pattern this is not a continuous pattern this is not uh, i mean there is no decrease in the ecogenicity of the uh, thickened wall so this is nodule that's why its ecogenicity is slightly greater than the low level internal echoes so when you pay attention you can pick these finding this is another example of endometriosis this is again transvaginal scan and on transvaginal scan a u is marked for the uterus but you can see in the right and the left both bilateral uh, disease these are bilateral endometriosis on the both side there is well defined complex cystic lesion with a low level internal echoes anyhow you cannot appreciate internal uh, ecogenic foci in that there is no fluid fluid level and there is no nodularity in the peripheral uh, rim so this is simple complex cyst uh, that is likely that you label this case as a hemorrhagic cyst but if you take the history you will be uh, able to diagnose this as endometriosis but normally if uh, wherever you feel that this is uh, uh, this type of appearances may mimic as dermoid cyst or hemorrhagic cyst or endometriosis uh, it would be best to write your differential and in the differential you can write whatever the clear pattern you can 
uh, see on the ultrasound imaging so in this case this particular case hemorrhagic pattern is quite visible so beside this hemorrhagic pattern you can write the endometriosis so uh, this would be your exact finding and again uh, this type of uh, appearances cannot be easily seen on the transabdominal scan uh, transabdominal is not the modality to pick the endometriosis for the endometriosis you always try to go for the transvaginal scan because in the transvaginal scan uh, due to high frequency you can appreciate all these internal and subtle findings if you pay attention towards the left side on this left side a slight nodularity can also be picked uh, on, on the left side only while on the right side uh, there is no nodularity available there is no uh, nodularity can be seen but on the left small superiorly uh, peripherally arranged nodularity can also be seen so this is another pattern of the endometriosis this is again a transvaginal scan and on this transvaginal scan u is marked for the uterus and these white arrow indicating a deep penetrating implant on posterior surface of the uterus Look at the uterine surface and outline is not clearly visible. Beside this you can appreciate small implants, small uh, adherent tissues with the uterine wall. This is actually endometriosis and endometriosis may appear in this fashion as well. Uh, again many a time if you do the transabdominal scan you will miss these presentations. This presentation can only be picked on the trans vaginal scan so you have seen different different patterns including ecogenic foci including low level of fluid fluid level within within the cystic lesion low level internal echoes with peripherally placed small soft tissue nodularity you can also uh, you have also seen uh, an aggressive condition where you can see bilateral endometriosis and uh, on this slide this is a typical appearance and always keep in mind that this is likely that some of the implants of the endometriosis may adhere to either the anterior or posterior wall of the uterus for that reason you have to thoroughly scan the patient and the transvaginal scan is the only option if i talk about the differential so in this condition this differential uh, in this condition the differential may be uh, adhesion because it's more likely there is something underneath the uterus there's something lying beneath the uterus posterior to the uterus so the one most common co uh, common differential would be adhesion but in the adhesion there will be small fluid accumulation around while you cannot see the fluid around that part so this is the only diagnosis that you can write on your report if in case of any doubt you can mention the adhesion and further image radiologically imaging you can advise but it best to write your differential and in the differential include endometriosis this is again a transvaginal scan and on this transvaginal scan and uh, another spectrum of appearance of the endometriosis can be shown uterus denote u denote the uterus while these arrows shows again implant of the endometrial endometrial tissues in the uh, pouch of douglas uh, this is also called as pouch of douglas or curly sac whatever you want to pronounce but here again you can appreciate very thick soft tissue um, collection soft tissue appearances within the within the curly sac uh, or in other words you can say posterior to the uterine wall Sometimes if clinician has not seen this report before and clinician has no idea that endometriosis may likely to appear in this fashion so he might ignore that or he might not write that at all on the report but uh, if you have seen that cases and if you have seen the, the, the images so you can confidently uh, write on your report that something is there something pathological some pathological process is going on uh, in the cul-de-sac 
posterior to the uterus so always document whatever you see on the ultrasound imaging mention it and explain that thing at least radiological pattern explain the radiological pattern which you have seen and after that when it comes to the conclusion mention that this point this soft tissues this uh, structure this lesion can be seen in the cul-de-sac the most possible diagnosis or most possible differential could be adhesion or endometriosis or maybe neoplastic lesion in the cul-de-sac further correlation is suggested um, it's best to advise mri for further correlation at least you will be able to give a guideline to your colleague so they could act upon so therefore do not ignore do not miss the things and uh, do not ignore the things so this was another uh, classical example of endometriosis so far you have seen multiple patterns of the endometriosis and i'm sure this time you're not going to miss all uh, these all these uh, endometriosis pattern yes guys uh, this was all about the endometriosis we have discussed at length uh, at what point we will call it as an endometrioma and how uh, the adhesion will appear and how the implants uh, and diffuse peritoneal uh, involvement will appear and uh, how we will label all that things so hopefully this uh, video will be quite um, clear for you uh, as far as um, uh, the postmenopausal status is concerned uh, this endometriosis can also occur in the uh, postmenopausal women as well so this point has already been discussed and i'm sure you will get plenty of information on this video so uh, the one important thing is again i will say is uh, repetition is the basis of memory so try to repeat all these information try to watch these videos so make it in your active memory try to produce uh, when it is needed and write a classical report because at the end of the day whatever you are present and uh, that is your report so your report is very important because your report will explain you it will explain the patient information it will explain the pathology as well and all the management is depends upon your report so keep watching uh, my videos stay in touch with me with some other informative videos we'll see each other till then take great care of yourself Bye-bye.